I'm Sheila Anderson, Weekend Jazz After Hours host on WBGO 88.3 FM, and I'm speaking with Larry Weeks, and please say your name and what you what you do. My name is Larry Weeks. I'm one of the participating artists in from the Fulton Art Fair, and I'm also the treasurer of the Fulton Art Fair. Okay, and how long has the Fulton Art Fair been in existence? The ex uh, Fulton Art Fair is celebrating its 59th year of existence. It was established, and um, many um, well-known artists, Jacob Lawrence was one of the founding members of, of the Fulton Art Fair. Okay, so for those who may not be familiar with the Fulton Arts Fair, where is it, and um, how can people check out the art there? Okay. The Fulton Art Fair um, traditionally has hosted one event a year. It's called the On the Fence, where artists come out and they hang their artwork around the park at Fulton and um, Utica in, in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn across from beds, uh, the Boys and Girls High School. And um, like I said, it's been in the past one year event. This year, we started um, hosting other exhibits in Brooklyn and as well as, as you can see, branching out to other venues such as WBGO. And and again, what is, what is your connection with WBGO? How did you um, get into, how did you make the connection between us jazz and art? Well, I've been listening to WBGO for, for years, and I, I thought it would be a good connection to have a show uh, around jazz, but Miss um, Kirk suggested that we do a Women in, in Black History for Black History Month, and it also is overlapped into Women's History Month, so, you know, it's a twofold thing. So we decided to, to participate, and we have about 15 artists who have participated, and the subject matter is all women in, in black history. And I understand you're new to painting, at least as professionally. When will we see some of your art? Well, I've been doing artwork basically all my life, but only in, within the last two years have I tried to, to promote my artwork and make more connections in in the art world since i was forced since i've retired so i'm an emerging artist at 63 hey my mom changed her life at 62 and she's 95 so you're doing great again thank you larry weeks and thank, thank you, you and i'm thank sheila you, anderson uh, thank you wbgo for hosting us and allowing us to be part of this event thank you and thanks to melvin isaacs for doing the camera work and setting up the interview. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Valerie Williams, and the person who I chose to represent is Dr. Mae Jemison, and she's the first African-American astronaut. She's the first woman to go into outer space. She's a doctor, she's an engineer, and she is just an inspirational person. She's started um, science businesses where she has uh, like five to ten year olds going to a science camp. She started a science corporation. She's also an inspirational speaker. A few of her ex quotes, and I like to read a few, are, you have the right to be involved, you have something important to contribute, and you have to take the risk to contribute it. Don't let anyone rob you of your imagination. Your creativity is your place in the world. It's your life. Go on. Do all you can with it. Make it the life you want to live. Images show us possibilities. A lot of times, fantasy is what gets us through reality. Girls can't do science, except we can. Failure to recognize possibilities is the most dangerous and common mistake one can make. Greatness can be captured in one word, lifestyle. Life is, the, is God's gift to you. Style is what you make of it. Some of the most fun people I know are scientists. And this is something a lot of people don't realize, that scientists and people in the sciences are actual people. We all started with the basic three R's, and some of us just went a little further. And we look at science as something very elite, which only a few people can learn. That's just not true. 
You just have to start early and give kids a foundation. Kids live up or down to expectations, which is what a lot of people don't realize. The difference between science and the arts is not that they are different sides of the same coin or even different parts of the same continuum, but rather they are manifestations of the same thing. The arts and the science, sciences are avatars of human creativity. Science provides an understanding of a universal experience. Arts provide universal understanding of a personal experience. She is one of the few people who is equating science with art. And it's already been documented that when you start children with art at an early age, it rewires the brain. And those children are more likely to excel in the sciences and in math. These are the kids who are most likely to go to college, which is really heartbreaking when you realize that that's the first thing that they take out of our schools. They take away our art. Uh, that's pretty much all I have with that, but I'd like to show that she has a stamp. This is a stamp that was made for her. She is the only astronaut who appeared on Star Trek. Here she is with Geordie. Okay. And here she is with Worf. Oh, I'm from the sciences, but I didn't know she existed until I started doing this project. And she is a true inspiration to girls, to girls of color, to women, women of color, because she shows us what we can do. I'm one of the artists. Uh, my uh, art work is uh, hanging up on the wall uh, and is uh, Shirley Chisholm. So I'm affiliated with the Fulton Art Fair and also I'm a producer of the uh, Artistic Talent Show, which is aired in Brooklyn at the Brick Medium. Okay, that's awesome. So um, just let us know your name. This way um, we're familiar with, with not just the look, but also that we can take a walk and look through and, and uh, see your piece. Yes, my name is Melvin Isaac, and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I'm a native of Brooklyn, and I've been drawing and painting and teaching kids uh, basically about 30 years. So, you know, this is what I do. And what's your uh, media? My medium is uh, oil. Oil? Yes, yes, That's yes, awesome. yes. And is it strictly oil or, or is it diverse? No, it's diverse. Uh, basically, uh, I do pastel, I do pencil, I do uh, acrylic, I do stippling, stippling, and uh, basically I do it all. All. Yes, yes. Well, that is awesome. It was Thank great you. meeting you, and uh, we look forward to seeing more of your work. <laughs> well, well, I know Shirley Chisholm, Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm, mm -hmm. has Brooklyn roots, and she was the first Caribbean American woman to run for U.S. presidency, and she was definitely left a legacy in my hometown of Brooklyn. And I didn't learn much about her until much later in life, which I think it's time that we start learning about her and all of the important things that she did as a legislator and for women and for people in general and mostly for children because I know she was a big advocate for children. So, and I'm looking at this work by Melvin Isaac and it really speaks to who she is and who she was. Right, which is me, the camera guy. Yes, and it's very nice to meet you. Okay, great, great, great. <laughs> and thank you for doing this. Thank you. All right, so we're good to go, thank you. Shirley Chisholm was the first African American woman to run for the president. She was nominated for president of the United States on July the 13th, 1972. When the Congresswoman from New York launched her spiritual campaign, she took on the political establishment. Shirley Chisholm said she ran for the office despite the hopeless odds to challenge the status quo. In her announcement speech, Shirley says, I am not candidate of black American, although I am black and proud. I am not the candidate of the woman movement of the country, although I am a woman 
and I am proud. My present before you now symbolize a new era in American political history. Chrisom lost the Democratic nomination to Senator George McGovern of South Dakota. Shirley Anit St. Hills Christum was a political figure who was decades ahead of her time. As a woman and a person of color, she has a long list of firsts to her credit, including first African-American woman elected to Congress in 1968, first African-American woman to seek a major party, nominated for President of the United States 1972, first woman to have her name placed in nomination for president at the Democratic National Convention, first African-American to be on the ballot on as a candidate for president. After serving just three years in Congress represent New York 12th District, Kristen decided to run using the slogan that I had gotten her elected to Congress in the first place unbroad and unbossed. From the Bethesda Stuyvesant section of Brooklyn, New York, Kristen initially pursued a professional career in child care and early childhood education. Switching to politics, she served four years in New York State Assembly before she made a name for herself as the first black woman to be elected to Congress. I don't know the artist that's uh that have put their artwork yes. up there, but basically what I can do is show you yes. the work that's here. And the work is being displayed today uh, from from six to yeah, eight. Nice. It's gotta go too. And this yeah, right. is uh, March the 16th at WDPO. I see lots of amazing, fantastic art with really, really talented artists. A lot of historical figures, a lot of musical figures, all women, trailblazers, leaders, really led the way for people now and people that everybody at this time needs to learn about and know about because they uh, history repeats itself so they taught us a lot of important lessons and the art is beautiful absolutely beautiful the colors the three-dimensional um, pieces it's wonderful I'm really glad they have this <laughs> thank you very much thank you do you have art here? I know I do not have art okay. here, but I appreciate I appreciate any art, and this art is phenomenal. I look at the colors, the vividness, and also um, I'm reading a lot about the different art, and I see that. Um, this has so so much meaning behind each piece. It's not just a pretty picture or beautiful colors together. It goes so much deeper than that, and I'm appreciating every single piece as I go along, taking my time, and this is beautiful. And I go to a lot of art galleries, but this is actually uh, is really affecting me and capturing. <laughs> it's getting into my emotions a bit. It's really deep, beautiful art. That's good. Thank you very much. See, I'm getting all tripped up. Because <laughs> it is beautiful stuff. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get this before I flip on it. Excuse me.
Alrighty, so I'm uh, Nadine Mattis.